Are you into tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, and Monster of the Week? Sweet. Roll with me. Welcome to Roll With Me. My name is Michael, and since I was just a kid in high school, I have been absolutely fascinated with tabletop role-playing games. Games like Dungeons and & Dragons, and Pathfinder, and Monster of the Week, and Call of Cthulhu, and New Monera, and Lasers and Feelings, and Honey Heist, and Shadowrun, and Gene Funk 2090. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite builds that I have ever done, uh, one of the best characters, in my opinion, that I have ever made. Uh, and before we get into that, I want to take a second and thank my sponsors, the people who make all of this happen. Jetpack Comics and Games in Rochester, New Hampshire is just the coolest comic book shop I have ever been into in my entire life. They have everything from vinyl pop figures to comic books, graphic novels, trade paperbacks, uh, all sorts of crazy zany gaming accessories and equipment and and apparel and, and just all the coolest stuff in the world. Everybody that works there knows everything there is to know about everything you could possibly want from the X-Men to Game of Thrones to Deadpool and uh, Dungeons and Dragons and all the all the stuff. <laughs> Jetpack Comics is just super, super cool. Um, they are located in Rochester, New Hampshire. Give them a call at 603-330-X-Men or visit them at www.jetpackcomics. Com. And while you're browsing the internet for all sorts of cool, crazy gaming accessories and nerdy stuff, go on down to my website, www.mosfacustoms.com. I make all sorts of dice boxes and deck boxes and dice bags and gaming accessories all made out of wood and laser burned and all sorts of wall art and esoteric stuff. Buy the merch. So... Since I was a kid, one of my great loves in this world, apart from the world of Dungeons & Dragons, was uh, comic books, comic books and graphic novels. Uh, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, all of that. Uh, huge Spider-Man fan, uh, enormous Superman fan. Comic books were one of the greatest joys of my life for many, many years, and unfortunately I've fallen a little bit out of it. Um, but the but the love is is still there, and you may ask yourself, why am I talking about comic books on a Dungeons and Dragons show? Um, you're, you're probably not asking yourself that because of the the title of the um, episode. Anyway, this love of comic books was a passion that I shared with my older brother, um, and recently he let me know that he was stepping in as Dungeon Master for, uh, for our gaming group that we've had for, for some time now. And uh, I decided I, I really needed to make a character that would be, that would be both fun to play um, and nostalgic for both of us, I think. I, I just really wanted to do something clever and fun that tied into our mutual interests to make it a more comfortable and more fun uh, situation for him in his first foray into dungeon mastering. And so I decided to build Iron Man. <laughs> Now, the character of Iron Man is a shockingly easy build to recreate in Dungeons & Dragons, uh, and for the purposes of this episode, we will be pulling almost entirely from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is the newest addition to the Dungeons & Dragons repertoire. It has a lot of really great stuff in it, um, including, uh, but not limited to, one of my favorite newer pieces of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, the Artificer class. Now, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of building Iron Man himself in just a minute, but first I want to take a second and talk about the Artificer class itself. Uh, it is 
relatively new uh, in case you weren't aware of it. I think it came out about a year ago. And in my opinion, the Artificer is the best thing to happen to Dungeons and Dragons since the Bard became a playable class. That's right, newbies. Bards weren't a thing until the second volume of the Player's Handbook in 4th edition D&D. Lame. Artificers are a really cool class. Much like wizards, they use intelligence as their casting stat, but unlike wizards, they don't cast the magic themselves. Well, they do, but, but they don't at the same time. I don't know, it's weird. Artificers use magic to imbue items and, and tools and, and pieces of armor and weaponry with spells, uh, which is a very different take on the wizard. Uh, instead of brandishing a wand and shooting a fireball out of it, an artificer might make a uh, might make a, a sword that can shoot fireballs out of it, or uh, or instead of casting uh, uh, levitate uh, on on themselves like a wizard would, an artificer would craft boots of of anti gravity that they would use to then cast the spell levitate. Every spell that an artificer can use is implemented and facilitated by their items. Now this gives a really unique flavor to the artificer class, because unlike every other magic user who's either using magic out of the palm of their hand, or, uh, or, or, or like I said, brandishing a wand or a staff using magical implements, the Artificer's power really lies in their tools. They can use jeweler's tools or tinker's tools or even thieves' tools to create the kind of weaponry and and magic itemry that they that they want um, just using their their incredible wits. And because of this, I decided to to dive into the artificer first. Um, to see how we might be able to build a Tony Stark lookalike. And then I was absolutely shocked because I found out that you can build Iron Man pretty much up and down with an Artificer build. No multi-classing, no weird obscure rule sets, no unearthed arcana junk, just up and down Artificer flavored how you want it to be flavored. Building Iron Man takes just a couple of small creative tweaks um, that are entirely within the rule set of 5th edition. So let's take a second and break down the character of Iron Man and see why I'm taking the steps that I took to build this character uh, and what it is about him that makes him so fun and so playable. Um, if you take away the suit, from Iron Man, you are left with a charming, charismatic, billionaire playboy with a genius level intellect. And so it's gonna be very important for us to pay attention to our intelligence scores and our charisma score. Now to really get this build to be accurate and right, right from, from the gate, right starting at, at level one, uh, we need to go with what I think is the most boring race choice, I know, racist, uh, human, but specifically the variant human, allowing you, instead of taking a plus one to all of your ability scores, you take a plus one to two and get a feat, uh, which means that the, the variant human is the only first level character that starts right off with a feat, and that's gonna be very, very important for us because it helps to shape the type of technology that our artificer can use. For our ability score increases, obviously we're going with intelligence because that's our casting stat, and charisma because that's Tony Stark. He is charming and smooth and snarky and very persuasive and gets away with a lot using just his words. Whether you're referencing the, the films or the, or the comic books, Tony Stark is a magnanimous kind of person. He is, he is big and gaudy and gauche, and he is the face of the Avengers, right? Captain America is, you know, Captain America, but, but really, Iron Man's kind of running all of the, the, the show here. He's pulling the strings. 
Tony Stark is the public face of superheroes by the time uh, Civil War comes around. Um, and he really is, he maintains his, his status as the main character of the Avengers through Infinity War, through Endgame. It is all about Tony Stark's struggle, and, and it is about his, his struggle with humanity and goodness and what is just and right, and, and we're going to do our best to create a character just like that. Now, at level one, because we took the variant human race, we get to take that feat. And for our feat, we are taking Magic Initiate, which allows us to choose a couple of cantrips and a first level spell from any spell list that we want that is outside of our normal class range. And for the purposes of building Iron Man, we are going with the Warlock Initiate feat, um, which doesn't sound right talking about it. Like, it, do it doesn't seem fitting for Iron Man to say that he is, you know, part Warlock. But the spells that come with it, or the ones that we're choosing for that matter, are helping to define his technology. And and when we think about Iron Man in his suit, we have to we have to think about the kinds of powers that he uses. Building our artificer, our Iron Man, Tony Stark look-alike artificer, uh, we just running down the line of what we get. Uh, the first thing that it says in the Artificer class is Magical Tinkering, uh, which is a feature that allows us to take a tiny object and instantly, in, in the over the course of six seconds, right, one standard action, uh, imbue it with a small magical ability, sensory effects, stuff like our cantrips like Prestidigitation or Thaumaturgy, um, the little flares of magic that we can add uh, to tiny objects. Uh, I think the first thing that I did uh, playing this character in our first session was I infused a little ball bearing with with light um, and installed it in a blacksmith's workshop and he paid me like a gold for it but it was just like a fun thing that I got to do you know building something for somebody else and selling it um, which is something that historically Tony Stark always did Stark Industries was a, a massive uh, arms dealer and and a massive uh, technological uh, company f for the use of various governments and uh, very rich people who could afford their technology uh, and and my character at level one is sort of aspiring to that goal now here is where the magic happens literally we're uh, we're gonna go into spells now and um, the kind of spells that we're taking for the uh, artificer. While we're picking our spells, we need to keep in mind that the artificer, again, does not use magic like a wizard or a druid or a warlock. They don't cast spells out of their hands. We are effectively recreating Iron Man's technology. Um, so keeping in mind that aspect, we need to be mindful of the gear that we can actually keep on us in game uh, without becoming over encumbered. Uh, this gets much easier as we level up um, and take the subclass options. Um, but first we take uh, green flame blade as a cantrip, which lets us use a simple sword and turn it into a crazy fire jumping lightsaber, basically. Um, and we are taking Shocking Grasp, right? Thinking of Iron Man's gauntlets and his ability to, uh, to pulse energy, electricity, uh, through his armor, through the gauntlet, uh, into his enemies, um, causing them to be electrocuted. For a first level spell, I took Featherfall, because imagine Iron Man falling from great heights and then just splatting on the ground. Uh, it's not very Iron Man-esque. Uh, maybe his armor has these little flaps that open up and catch the, the air and create drag so that he doesn't land painfully. Yeah, I, I also took Tosh's Caustic Brew uh, as kind of an oil slick. This is, this is a reference to early Iron Man comic books where he was able to deploy an oil slick uh, almost like 
Batman comedy esque, causing cars in a chase to spin out. And yes, I know Grease is technically also a spell that I could take uh, that would create a very similar effect, but Tasha's Caustic Brew is uh, funny and new. Uh, and I really liked it, so I wanted to include at least something that's brand new in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything uh, into this character. Now here is where the Warlock spell list comes into play, because Iron Man's, Iron Man's first defense against enemies, the, the weapon that he uses most often in the comic books, in the films, in video games, if, if it was a video game, his basic, you know, press X to attack, his basic attack would be his repulsor beams that come out of his palms. And to recreate this, I took Eldritch Blast. So just think about it for a second. I get it. Eldritch Blast, a, a blast of horrible Eldritch Nightmares coming out of somebody's palm doesn't really seem very Iron Man-esque. But at its core, what Eldritch Blast is, is a beam of light that deals force damage. And eventually, with Eldritch Invocations as a warlock, you can beef it up to do things like push people away. And you can do things like make it deal extra damage. Now, typically, you could only do that with a Warlock, except there's a new feat in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that lets you take Warlock Invocations, even if you're not a Warlock, which is what we're going to take when we get our next feat. Now, I haven't gotten there yet in the character, but it's going to be pretty sweet when I can blast people 10 feet away and deal 1d10 plus my Charisma damage to them as my base attack, and for the purposes of Iron Man, because he is a just character, and because he is a, a good character, I, I've made this character lawful good, um, and I have made it flavor-wise so that all of his repulsor blasts that come out of his palms, his basic attack, are dealing non-lethal damage. So they really are, even though they are Eldritch Blasts, uh, they really are just dealing non-lethal force damage to get people out of his face and deal some some quick hits uh, on the battlefield. I also took uh, Witch Bolt, which again is not very Iron Man-y, but let's say he's got this jewel on his chest that he can fire a beam of electricity out of to, to hold on to somebody, which mirrors his fight with Obadiah Stane uh, in the Iron Man, uh, the first Iron Man film, uh, where he is able to launch this beam of, of electricity out of his chest and basically use it uh, to to stabilize uh, his his attack on his enemy, and we can do this very easily with Witch Bolt. Now, at second level, the Artificer receives a feature called Infuse Item. This lets us take regular mundane objects and infuse them with magic, being able to create, ostensibly, magic items. And not just tiny objects, we could infuse a set of armor, or a, uh, or a sword, or a bundle of arrows. There is a, a lot that we can do here um, which can mirror Tony Stark kind of working on the Avengers gear, creating a new shield for Captain America, making a new suit for Black Panther, making the Iron Spider for Spider-Man. These are all things that we can do to buff our party, because Tony Stark isn't really just about himself, he is about his team. And new spells and yada yada yada, but here's where it really pops off at level 3 we get to dive into the Artificer subclasses, and there's really only one that we should take, and that is the Armorer subclass. And here's why. An Artificer who specializes as an Armorer modifies armor to function almost like a second skin. The Armorer is enhanced to hone the Artificer's magic, unleash potent attacks, and generate a formidable defense. The Artificer bonds with this armor, becoming one with it as they experiment with it and refine its magical capabilities. Sound familiar? I mean, change the word magic to science and you got fucking Iron Man. Now, just at third level, we also receive the spells Magic Missile and Thunder Wave. Now, remember that Magic Missile allows us to fire off three little shots of missiles that can never miss. Like little homing missiles. Almost like little 
homing missile turrets that Iron Man and War Machine both have. And Thunderwave gives us that really cool effect that like Black Panther uses in the films where he's able to just expel the energy stored up in his suit, all of that kinetic energy, and just blast people away. Iron Man can do that shit too. We seem to do it all the time in the comic books. And now we have those spells just given to us in the armor. I think they did this on purpose. Do you think they, I think they did this on purpose. We also get the arcane armor feature, which goes a little something like this. Your metallurgical pursuits have led to you making armor a conduit for your magic. As an action, you can turn a suit of armor you are wearing into arcane armor, providing you have the smith's tools in hand. You gain the following benefits while wearing this armor. If the armor normally has a strength requirement, the arcane armor lacks this requirement for you. You can use the arcane armor as a spellcasting focus for your artificer spells. The armor attaches to you and can't be removed against your will. It also expands to cover your entire body, although you can retract or deploy the helmet as a bonus action. What? C come on! It's just Iron Man! They just made Iron Man! You can also put on or take off your armor in a single action, as opposed to the normal 10 minutes it would take any other person. You can just have a set of full plate armor that gives you like an 18 AC and ignores any penalties and gives you advantage on stealth and makes you faster and sticks to your body and can form around you in six seconds. I really didn't have to do a lot of work here to, to make Iron Man. I think it's really just an armor or artificer build with the Eldritch Magic Initiate feat. Fuck. Oh yeah, there's a subclass of the subclass of the Armor or Artificer. Uh, you can either pick the Guardian Armor, which I kind of picture as like Hulkbuster. Um, that's like the big defender, big strong, take a lot of hits, be a tank kind of armor. And there's the Infiltrator, which I took for the Iron Man builds because I'm going for a more standard Iron Man uh, kind of creation here. Uh, this gives us uh, the dampening field, which allows us to have advantage on stealth checks, uh, sort of like a cloaking device that Iron Man has used in the comic books many, many, many times. It also gives us a lightning launcher. Um, man, it really just is Iron Man. I don't think I realized that until recording this episode. I hope it's still helpful anyway. Now, as we level up this character, we can take spells like Fly and Levitate and be able to recreate the other powers of Iron Man's suit. Um, we can take other buffs for ourselves uh, that can recreate the heads-up display inside his helmet. Um, there are so many things that we can do to create Iron Man. Wizards of the Coast really laid it out for us in a way that leaves the possibilities almost endless. Uh, with a little bit of flavor and a little bit of critical thinking and some flair, um, we can pretty easily create Iron Man in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Um, it's totally Adventure League compliant, and it is going to be an absolute blast to play. I also forgot to mention earlier that at, starting at level 1, I took the Guild Artisan background uh, because... Tony Stark is a guild artisan. He is a weapons and arms manufacturer from a long line of weapons and arms manufacturers. And my character, Stony Tark, came from a long line of armorers uh, who created weapons for the highest bidder. And he only realized that this was not the greatest way to be when he was abducted by a pack of goblins, held hostage, and uh, conscripted to build a weapon of mass destruction uh, that they could use to unleash upon their enemies. Instead, he built himself a suit of magical armor and blasted his way out and now identifies as the superhero Alloy Dude. 
Well, that's just about all I've got for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this very rudimentary build of creating Iron Man in Dungeons & Dragons. Um, before I go, I also have to post a, uh, a correction from last week's episode. Uh, I read through my cousin's description of this character very quickly at the end, um, and I misread uh, a... O O as A O E and mistakenly said that Zephyr Strike allows you and your mount to avoid area of effect spells without thinking about it. It allows you to avoid attacks of opportunity, which is it's not this, this it's, not, it's not the same thing. But I am a smooth brain dum dum, and uh, yeah, 